Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finished Coding. My name is Ram and this is the seventh part of the car chase series. In case you haven't watched parts 1 to 6, there will be a card for you right here. Now before I proceed, I do want to congratulate you for making it all the way as this will be the last and final video in this series. By the end, you will have the health bar ready along with the sound effects. We can begin by setting up the sound effects as the code there is much simpler. We head over to the stage and within a forever loop, play sound part 1 until done. Following this, we play sound part 2 until done. If you take a look at the sounds tab, you will see that there are two sounds, part 1 and part 2. These sounds will be played in order and continuously be looped. Before we move on to the health bar, there is another feature that we must incorporate. Remember that within the audio button sprite, we made sure that there was a mute feature. If the button was pressed or if the M key was pressed, we switched the costume of the audio sprite to be off. Based on that costume, we decide here whether we should play the music or we should mute it. So we set up a parallel script. When the green flag is clicked, we get into another forever loop. If the audio costume number is 1, we set the sprite's local volume to 100. Within the else statement, we set it to 0. The first costume of the audio sprite is the on costume, while the second one is the off costume. Okay, so if you test out the program, the background music should start playing. The sounds will automatically mute themselves if you press the M key or click on the audio button. My own sounds are muted because if I play them, the video will be taken down on YouTube. Let's now make sure that the health of the player is functioning the way that we want it to. Before we program the health bar, it's going to be easier to program the health changes within the car sprite. We create a variable called health for all sprites. We will make the health reduce when the car collides with an obstacle or if the car collides with the border. Let's first deal with the collisions with the obstacles. We will only perform the collision physics if the player is still alive. If the player's health is less than zero or equal to zero, then there's no point of doing any of these things. In code, that will be if health is greater than zero. Before this, we change health by minus one. This should be obvious. When there's a collision, the player's health must go down. We now have to put this code within every if statement. Starting with the obstacle border test function, everything goes inside the if. We do the exact same thing when the x velocity is less than zero. The same goes true for the third case where the x velocity is equal to zero. Great, that's all of the modifications that we have to do for the obstacle collisions. Now we have to deal with the border collisions. Once again, the code is quite similar. We change health by minus one and only make changes if the health is greater than zero. We can duplicate the code three times and put in car physics left, car physics right, and all the code starting from the test border side function within the if statement. We can finally move on to the health bar sprite. When the green flag is clicked, we hide the health bar. This may seem odd since the health bar will be shown all of the time. What we're doing here, however, is showing the clones of the health bar, but hiding the sprite itself. After this, we go to x0, y160. This will be at the top center of the stage. We now have to create the clones of the health bar, so we create a custom block called init clones. It is very important to click the checkbox, which says run without screen refresh. If you do not do this, there will be a lot of lagging when the game starts and when the game restarts after the player dies. We can put on the init clones block after we set the position, but we'll define this block later. Once the clones have been created, we set health to 10. This will be the starting health of the player, and each time he hits an obstacle or the border, the health subtracts by 1. In other words, the player has 10 lives. Within a forever loop, we make the sprite go to the front layer and check if game setting is lobby. If it is, then we set health to 10. This is necessary when the game resets. At this point, game setting will switch from playing to lobby. The player's health will be 0, so we reset it to 10. 
The last thing that we'll do within this script is check if the health is zero or if the health is less than zero. In either of these two cases, we broadcast a new message called game over. When this message is received, we will reinitialize the clones and do a bunch of other stuff that we'll get to later. For now, let's define the init clones block. Each clone will be identified by two properties, a clone type and a clone ID. There will be three clone types. The first one will be green, the second one red, and the third one border. Within the same type, the clones will go to different coordinates based on their clone ID. We can create those two variables right now. The clone type variable has to be set for the sprite only in order to avoid errors later on. Similarly, the clone ID variable also has to be set for the sprite only. If you take a peek at the costumes tab, you will see that there are three costumes, green, red, and border. The clone type of course refers to this. Getting back into the code, we first set clone type to green. We then set clone ID to one and get into a repeat 10. Each time we create a clone and change clone ID by one. This way, there will be 10 clones created. The clones will each have their own clone type and clone ID variable. While the clone type will be the same for all of them, the clone ID variable for the first clone that was created will be one, for the second clone that was created will be two, and so on until the 10th clone has a clone ID of 10. We can duplicate the existing code and just change clone type to red. This way we get 10 more numbered clones with their clone type being red. We don't have to bother with clone IDs for the border clone. It's enough if we just set the clone type to border and then create a clone. All right, before we get into the clone positioning, we can finish off the game over script. We reset health to 10 and we set the game setting back to lobby. At this point, we'd want to delete the existing clones and replace them with new ones. We can't continue our script if we just have a delete this clone block, so we put that within a repeat one. After this is done, we can use the init clones block once again. The final script will be the clone script. When a clone starts, we do a few things. We first show the clone and then go right to the front layer. We will have a separate if statement for each of the three clone types. First, we check if clone type is red. If it is, then we go back 21 layers and then switch the costume to red. The switch costume part should be obvious, but the reason we go back 21 layers is so that the red clones are behind the green clones and the border. Within a forever loop, we go to an X position of minus 41 plus clone ID minus one multiplied by nine. The Y position will stay constant at 160. I gave a detailed explanation for how the score clones are positioned in an earlier part and the health bar clones work the exact same way. If we do this, the starting clone will be positioned at an X position of minus 41, and each succeeding clone will be to the right of its previous clone by nine pixels. We can duplicate the code till here and replace the condition to check if the clone type is green. If this is the case, then we make two changes. We want the clones to stay in the front so we can delete the backwards block. The costume should also be changed to green. There's another feature that we have to add. Whenever the player collides into an obstacle or into a border, the last green clone should hide itself. So within an if then else statement, we check if clone ID is greater than health. If this is true, then we hide the clone, otherwise we show it. Upon reflection, this should be quite evident. When the health variable goes from 10 to nine, the 10th green clone should hide. When the health variable goes from nine to eight, the ninth green clone should hide. The last thing to do is to set up the border clone. This is very easy. If the clone type is set to border, then within a forever loop, we go to X zero, Y 160. This is the position where the border will cover all of the clones. All right, that will be everything that has to be done to get the entire car chase game. If you test out the program now, the health should decrement constantly when the player collides into an obstacle or into the border. The game should also nicely transition into the lobby when the player loses. 
If you've enjoyed this game series, then make sure you click on the playlist on your screen right here, as that will take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.